five of ten. The land of why. Anybody following along in the land of why series for this fall? We've been through a few whys already. And here we are in number five, a topic that I deal with with a lot of my coaching couples, uh, a topic that brings up a whole bunch of questioning. And I find myself explaining a lot. <laughs> Being Polly, why? Why would anybody want to be Polly? makes absolutely no sense to the hardcore monogamous and it makes total sense to those who want open relationship who don't want to commit to one person and that's often the case isn't it it's the concept that because somebody is poly that they have commitment issues not so not so at all has there, there's if you have commitment issues, you got commitment issues no matter what the relationship is. Uh, commitment issues are not about being poly or being monogamous. Commitment issues a whole nother ball game. When I think back to how poly came into my world, it was based on the fact that I wanted integrity. I knew that I needed to learn about myself and I wanted to be in integrity in the relationships that I was in. I knew that no one relationship that I had was 100% fulfilling or fitting for me. And I was in a space in my life where I didn't believe that it was possible to have one person really aligned to me in all the ways that I needed have all those values and likes, dislikes, temperament, goals, views on health, children, sex, relationship. I didn't think that was possible. But what I had discovered, and I have to understand, you know, as some of the conversations of the last four episodes went, you know, why did I have sex that I didn't want? Why did I stay married? Why was I uh, okay with being a mistress? Why did I cheat, right? Well, all of that, and the, the cheating taught me that maybe, maybe I don't know myself. Maybe, maybe monogamy is not for me. Maybe I need to go figure my shit out. Maybe, is this just the way guys are? Is this the way they treat women? You know, being a mistress taught me, hey, you get, the best of that person but you know what you don't get the real person that's the reality is that you don't go deep with that person because you are just getting little tidbits of them and of course we can any of us can show up and be perfect have everything to say right and do right and constant romance and all the you know fairy tale stories when we don't have to do life but what do we want? What what allows us to feel strong, stable, connected, supported? What makes us feel that there's unconditional love? It's getting in there and going through the day to day. It's knowing that somebody's going to be there when you're not perfect, when you've fallen down. And that's what true love is. And that's what we're all looking for. So why I went Polly? I went Polly because I didn't know. I did not know myself. I did not have a clue as to who I was because I had about this big of a spectrum to go from. You want to catch up on that, watch the other episodes. But I had, I, I, the one thing I did know is that I didn't want to repeat the cheating because that felt nasty. That felt dirty. That felt horrible. That was wrong. And I knew that it was wrong at my core, everything about it. And when I learned about open relationships and about polyamory, what was the most appealing thing to me was the transparency, the truthfulness, the authenticity, the reality that it did force a person into having conversations that in 16, 17 years of marriage, I had never had with my husband. And here I was having these conversations out the gates with people that 
you know, I, deep. And really, are we in alignment here? How do we feel about that? Are we good with this? The things that you typically will find that a lot of people hide because they're going after something. They think that they have to not tell the truth about things. Well, open relationship polyamory, if done right, if done well, there's plenty, much like monogamy, there's plenty that is done wrong, unhealthy, is loaded with, with lies and deceit. Okay, so let's not just take this as a full spectrum that this is the way poly is. Healthy poly is based in transparency, authenticity, integrity, in, in talking about difficult things, in really stating your truth, and in commitment. Commitment to self, commitment to the relationships that you have, and to make sure that there is open communication between all parties involved. And it's, guess what? Not always about sex. It is about, the concept of poly is, not one person can meet all your needs, so therefore, don't put all that weight onto one person. Instead, try to get your needs met from multiple people. Now, we human beings always bring it back to sex, right? We always bring it back to sex. It's our number one hang up in relationships with good reason. It's an intimacy. It's a vulnerability. There's a commitment there. There's a connection there. There's a depth there. And it should be a bonding tool, not just a release tool. And we can get into that in another moment. But, but. In poly, when done right, you discuss what your needs are. A lot of the times, you'll have one partner that will be your primary partner. And it is the primary relationship. It is the relationship that you are making the long-term plans with the significant other, okay? This is a, in, in married couples who are poly or open. This is the, the person that you do give your all too in so many ways but at the same time you're allowing them and they are allowing you through agreements to get other needs met in other ways for example a polyamorous relationship can be as simple as I have a male friend I love to ballroom dance and I have a male friend and he loves to ballroom dance we have great chemistry but we're not having any sexual engagement. But my partner allows me to go dancing with this man. And yes, we might have some drinks, we might have this, there's flirting, there's that. And there's no harm in it because everybody knows there are agreements, the container is made. And if we want to change it, where maybe there is sex involved, then the primary person is who the middle person in this scenario of, of, would go to and say, hey, this is what this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm wanting. This is what I'm needing. This is what I'm desiring. They speak to their primary person and they take into account what their partner needs, wants, feels. They don't just jump out and go do. They have the conversation, that very difficult conversation. In monogamous relationships, the majority of the time, and this is where monogamy can become very unhealthy, if because in monogamy, we're taught that you just you, you assume so much. There's so much assumption in monogamy. And I personally believe that if monogamous couples learned about the difficult conversations and the transparency requirements and the agreements, the container that healthy poly couple, couples live by, that monogamy would actually be the ideal. Why monogamy of today is not the ideal for today and why we see so many more people becoming open, poly, swingers, all this kind of stuff is because of these very things. They don't know how to have these conversations and so much of it is done unhealthy because they don't, just because they say, I'm poly, I'm this, doesn't mean that they're doing it healthy. The majority of the time, 80% of the time, they do it wrong, it causes a breakup, they do it to cause sizzle in their relationship, they do it to heal wounds, they do it to for all these reasons. And they're all the wrong reasons. You can't heal the relationship that's broken by bringing another person into the relationship. 
You heal the relationship between two people by healing the relationship between them long before you ever consider opening a relationship if you want a healthy, open relationship. So, Polly forces you into conversations. Monogamy as we stand today with it and probably for all of time because if we go back into history of marriage and relationships and sex and monogamy, there's just this like, Shut up, don't ask, don't tell, just ignore, make assumptions, there's jealousy, there's this, there's that, and the majority of people do not communicate, okay? They just do not communicate. Hence my 16, 17 years of being married and all the ups and the downs in that was limited good communication. There's a lot of fighting, there was a lot of differences, there was a lot of crap there, but there wasn't heart-centered connection and communication. There wasn't the idea of actually going deep with each other. There wasn't trust built because guess what? It couldn't be because we wouldn't go deep. I go out, start dating, right? <laughs> I go out, I start dating. I get a bunch of boyfriends and I... I go, I don't want to lie to anybody. I, I, number one, I'm not in this moment. As after my divorce, I was like, I don't want, I don't want to be in a relationship. I don't want this like live in scenario. Uh, uh, somebody raising my kids with me. I don't want to have to deal with, with the everyday. I just want to explore, play, enjoy, learn relationship, which teaches me about me. Because, we define ourselves through relationship, okay? So, intuitively, I knew that. And I went out and I went, I have, to, I have to grow. I have to learn. I need to figure out what I even want in a relationship because all I have is this little piece over here and that wasn't very good. I didn't like it. It was miserable. And I knew I didn't want to repeat that. Well... Life has a funny way of always bringing you exactly what you need, exactly the lessons that you need. I find myself with a lot of men in my life all of a sudden at this point in my life, and I'm being poly without knowing that I'm being poly. I'm being in open relationships without even knowing it until a friend of mine said, hey, Kendall, do you know what? You are poly. And I went, huh? What do you mean? What's, what does that mean? What do you mean? I'm not in any relationships. I don't have significant others. I don't have a primary. I don't have a this. I don't have that. And they're like, no, 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 no. You're, you're having these conversations. You're having, you're having these multiple relationships and you're doing it all above board. The gist of folly. And there's many, many avenues within it. But that's the gist. Doing it all above board. Allowing yourself to love multiples to experience relationships in all different fashions. It can be same sex, it can be opposite sex, it can be sex, it cannot be sex. The definition, uh, the, the, not the definition, the, the way you choose to do poly is very personal. But the key factor is transparency, authenticity, integrity. That's the key factor. And that there is multiples making it poly. So, there I was. And we're talking, this is, you know, 12 years ago. 11, 12 years ago. There I was. I was learning. And what I really found myself, and I'll never forget this day, because I was driving to my office and I'm driving down the road and I was thinking about the date that I had the day before and the dates that I had coming up in the week. And I remember driving that morning to my office and just full of gratitude, full of gratitude for the men in my life because the men that were in my life in that time frame were healing me, were teaching me, were allowing me to learn things and to communicate things that I never thought I would be able to learn, to communicate, to experience, because I hadn't before that. I did not have a healthy representation of relationship, not in my childhood with my parents, not with boyfriends, not with 
husband. And here I was learning and asking and inquiring and experiencing and attempting to speak my truth more and more and more and figure out what my yes and my no's were and all these different things. And it was a beautiful experience. Now, as many of you know, I'm not Polly. Which is number 10 of 10, why I am monogamous. But why I was Polly was because I needed to learn myself. Because I was not ready to go deep. And because the right person was definitely not there. And the reality of 12 years ago was that I would have missed him. He could have showed up. He could have been right in my fucking face and said, hey, here I am. And I would have been blind. I was not able in that time frame to be able to go deep. I did not have the skills. I did not have the emotional maturity. I was wounded beyond measure. I was within my own chaos. And it would have been disastrous. I am grateful to my soul, to, to God, for presenting the opportunities for me to move through things, to learn. And the one thing that I can say for any of you monogamous people out there who go, oh God, she's talking about Polly and blah, 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 blah. But why did she go, why did she go monogamous? And, and that will come up. But if you want to really improve your relationship, whether you are open Polly or monogamous, I strongly encourage any soul on the planet to read the Polly books, to do the inquiry work, to have the difficult conversations with your person. If you really truly love them, if they really truly are the one that you want to do life with, that you feel bonded with, and you want, you want that beautiful love story, then learning the communication, learning about agreements, learning about integrity, learning to not assume that just because you're in a monogamous relationship, you're exclusive. Just because you're in a monogamous relationship that, that you are completely aligned with what monogamy means to you. Because much like Polly, there's a million and one ways to do monogamy. Okay. And that means that it's all about how we psychologically and emotionally process things. What we, we have these, this wounding from our past. In every relationship, we bring forth all our past relationships. We have mommy and daddy wounds. We have all this stuff that we bring unconsciously. And it's invisible, but it's there. And it makes up the relationship that we're in. The thing that Polly does teach us is to get aware, to get aware of it. And at the end of the day, that's what I did. Polly for was to become consciously aware and to do the own, my own work on me and to learn, not just, Hey, this is showing up at my doorstep. I guess I'll just do this relationship. Although I had plenty of that. I had to learn through it and to see where that was. And then I had to learn what I wanted. And then I had to look for it coming to me and I had to learn how to recognize it. And I had to learn, Oh, well there's that piece, but there ain't this important piece. This isn't a line here. What are my values? What are my core values in relationship in life? How, you know, how do we relate with money? How do we relate with kids? How do we relate on health timelines? There's a million things to discuss and to really look at. And when we're looking at a partner, that life partner, whether we are poly or monogamous, we have to know these things. And you know how you learn? Relationship. Testing the waters. Exploration. Communication. But if you're not being in integrity... And if you're just one of these serial monogamists out there that, well, I'm dating this person and I'll do that for three months. And then I'm dating this person and I'll do that for three months, but I'm not exclusive. I'm keeping my eyes open out here for something better because that's what we do. We are ser The majority of people are serial monogamous that are not exclusive, which means just that I'm with you as long as you're good enough, but I'm keeping 
my door is open, I'm not exclusive. To be exclusive and monogamous means that your focus, your whole dedication is to this relationship, to this person. And that, that right there, if you get to that point, the only way you're actually going to be able to completely zone in and get to this point of like, I can do this and I don't need to look out here anymore is to know who the fuck you are and what you want, which Sorry to say, the majority of people don't know. Don't know because they bounced and they think, oh, same, you know, different person, same shit on the table. Different person, but this keeps happening over here. Why am I never this? Why does this always happen? Why do I always attract this kind of person? Well, it's because you haven't healed your own internal wounds. You haven't actually, you're scared to death to do your own inner work. And what relationship is, is that we do inner work through relationship because only in relationship are we going to get triggered only in relationship are we going to get our feelings hurt only in relationship are we going to deal with our daddy issues and our mommy issues only in relationship are we going to find out exactly how much we've grown or not where our ego stands out and where we've learned to emotionally mature and be able to communicate in a healthy fashion but you got to be willing to do it so do I recommend that anybody goes poly? No, absolutely not. Poly's not for the majority of people. It isn't. Too much jealousy. They're too scared to have the conversations. There's too much, there's just too much work in it. Shit, most poly couples probably shouldn't be poly because they're not willing to do the work. They just want the easy sex and the lack of commitment, which is where the idea comes in that it's all about sex and no commitment. When in truth, it's not about the sex. It is about expansion, but it is about commitment 100%. Commitment to self, commitment to integrity, commitment to growth, and commitment to a person at such a deep level that you're willing to bury your heart and soul to them and to really be seen. And, can, and belief that they're not going to leave you because you do. Because it's really scary when we're that vulnerable. Like I said, though, whether you are poly or monogamous, strongly encourage you to explore the resources out there around open relationship, around poly, around, it's the, it is, it's the conversations. When I say difficult conversations, that's what they are. Explore that. Ask yourself, I, I know I know my partner, but how well do I know my partner? How aligned are we? Am I making a lot of assumptions in this relationship? Or have we really deep dove? What would happen if this scenario happened? What would happen if this scenario happened? Do I know what my apology languages are? Yeah, there's a thing. Apology languages, love languages, apology languages. Do I know what they are? Is that true? How do I handle things? What's my emotional maturity level? So many questions. It's not about the sex. It's about the communication. It's about the truth telling. It's about the authenticity, the real raw you showing up in relationship. And that's why I did Polly to learn the real raw me. And that's exactly why I use today in my beautiful fucking relationship, which is monogamous and exclusive. Everything that I've learned over the last 12, 15 years around open relationship because as difficult as those conversations are, they make the foundation all the stronger. Okay, on that note, I gotta get out of here. My grandson is waiting on me. I am going to go babysit for like 20, 30 minutes. Um, so, if you have any questions, you wanna learn the tools, you wanna learn about apology languages, you wanna learn about these difficult conversations, well, that is what I do with all of my couple clients. No matter what your your status is, no matter what the label of your relationship is, no matter what you've been through, whether it's affairs or just meeting, dating, you've been married for 20, 30 years, you want to improve that relationship. You want to really build that foundation. You want to restore it, rekindle it, rejuvenate it, vitalize that relationship. Well, there's some beautiful, beautiful conversations that are kind of difficult, but wow. 
Wow, if you really want to feel your partner's heart and you really want to connect at a soul level, they're mandatory. Reach out to me. I'd be happy to help you. And as always, remember, you are worthy of a beautiful relationship. You are worthy of the love. You are worthy of the truth. And you are worthy of letting yourself be seen. Stop existing, start living, and I will catch you tomorrow with another Land of Why.